What's up, y'all? This is Ty. I am here to review the docu-series Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. And I said to myself, why in the world is there a dark side to kids TV? There should not be a dark side to kids TV. What is going on here? So now this docu-series, which um, airs on the Investigation Discovery Channel, and also you can watch it on HBO Max. I'm sorry, not HBO Max, Max, because it's just Max now. That's where I watch it. I still have a habit called HBO. I watch it on Max. I watched four episodes. They're telling me that there's a, a fifth episode coming out, and it's supposed to be a five-part series, and that fifth episode is coming out on April 7th. I will be watching that as well. But this, I'm telling you, this one, y'all, is... It's not easy to watch because it's we're talking about the abuse and mistreatment of children on family-centered shows that aired on Nickelodeon. So the focus of this is this is the they focus on the tenure of showrunner and producer, writer, actor Dan Schneider, who created all of these shows for the Nickelodeon network. And he was on it from like the late 90s to like 2017, 2018 or something like that. So he had a long run and a string of hit kids shows such as uh, All That, um, iCarly, The Amanda Show, Josh and Drake, Josh and Drake, just to name, just to name a few. It's just hit after hit after hit. After hit after hit, he made stars out of some of these young people. Some of them are still going strong today. Ariana Grande, she was on what that show, Sam and Cat. She's a big pop star now. Uh, Amanda, um, the young lady Amanda Bynes from the Amanda show and all that. Keenan and Kel, you know, they all went on to be successful. Amanda's still having some troubles now as an adult. But when you get into this, it's like, this is crazy. It was really crazy. Now, Dan himself was a young actor. I believe he was a child actor, too. He was on Head of the Class. He started out on Head of the Class. Y'all remember Head of the Class? Or oh, am I aging myself? I used to watch that. And I remember that show, and I liked that show. But I didn't really follow his career, so I didn't realize this is that same guy from Head of the Class that I used to watch on that show. That was a good show until they changed the teacher. I didn't like when they switched teachers. The new teacher wasn't as cool as the first teacher they had. But that's not what we're here for. We're here about this docuseries, um, Quiet on the Set. So they pretty much are telling us that these kids on these beloved shows were going through hell. You think we have this thing of, you know, it's Hollywood, it looks fun, all the glitter and gold, but a kid's show, Nickelodeon is supposed to be happy and fun. Nickelodeon. I mean, come on, the theme song, Double Dare, the slime, the all the fun stuff that you love and you're telling me it's just heartbreaking to hear that this, these things were happening to the kids, to the staff, just heartbreaking. Now, Dan Snyder, he was a big deal over there at Nickelodeon. He was making hit show after hit show after hit show. He was, you could say, the Aaron Spelling of kids shows or the Norman Lear of kids shows because he just had a string of hits like they did, but just on, on a kid's network. And with this, I guess the more power he got, the more out of control he got. So that's what they're saying. That's what. So they have former cast members on some of these shows expressing how they felt, how at one point he could be really, really fun. And then he could make you feel really small. He could be really mean. And if he liked you, if you were on his good side, you became a star. If he disliked you, <clears throat> Sometimes you got kicked off the show, but it was a it was still children. And where's the therapy? Where's the 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 guidance? Where's the I thought there were child labor laws. Some of these children were being overworked, work late hours, going past the labor laws. Although their parents were on the set, things were still going crazy. They had one cast member, his mom mentioned how she would speak out on certain things and she felt certain things were sketchy and funny or humiliating to her son. And you have the kids saying, well, they're adults now, but saying when they were kids, there were certain things they did not like that they were being put in on these shows and compromising positions, and, and but they, there was nothing they could say about it. And then you had adults not standing up to Dan Snyder either and allowing these things to go on. So all of that was like, really, really heartbreaking to hear and watch and hear some of them give their story and tell what happened to them. And I was just like, this is crazy. Just 
And, you know, I know a lot of you who are a bit younger than me that grew up on these shows, you're probably devastated knowing that your favorite show, all that or this one, that one, that these people got harm was done to them. You know, that that that's the part that just really gets me. So the first episode, like I said, it started out. We meet some of the cast members from previous shows telling their experience and how they felt. Some of the black cast members feeling like they were the one woman said she felt like she was a token black girl, but she knew her place. And, you know, she always felt, uh, you know, not as liked. And it was another guy that felt uncomfortable on certain things. And then they mentioned how some of the sketches had little hidden sexual things in there, like looking like somebody was, you know, coming on your face. But they used the slime or, you know, a, a actress squeezing a tomato, but it looked like she's squeezing a penis. And, and well, just things like that, just that just made the kids uncomfortable and lewd jokes being told on the set of a children's show. Disgusting. Just totally dis I was just mad watching this. But of course, Dan Snyder has uh, went to his YouTube ch uh, page and he issued an apology. And there's things in here that he denies doing and denies happen. But you have a whole bunch of people that have come forward and said certain things. And it was really crazy. So you had the um, writers, two women that were writers of his. Um, they were interviewed they accused him. They were um, Christy Stratton and Jenny Kiljan. And they accused him of creating a very hostile work environment. They accused him of being misogynistic, making lewd jokes, forcing them to do things that they didn't want to do, um, underpaying them. And then when one of them went to the Writers Guild to tell that, he called and told, did you go to the Writers Guild? Did you do that? Because if you did, I'll see to it that you don't work in this for Nickelodeon again. So this dude had power. He had a lot of power. He was, he had power and it went to his head and he was dominating the kids shows on Nickelodeon. And he had these people really scared and just reprimand, reprimanding them and doing things to them that I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy. And it's sad to hear. And guess what? As the show progresses, it gets worse. Let's get into these these skits that had, like there was a skit they mentioned that uh, Penelope Taint, um, which is a character, okay, innocent enough, it's a character, Penelope Taint. But when they met, got into what the meaning of her name, Taint, apparently, they said, is the skin that is between uh, your penis and the anus. What? And like he would throw little... Jokes in there, hidden jokes like that. Why are you doing that in a children's show? Why are there lewd jokes? Why are there all these? It was just disgusting. But again, that's not the worst of it. Um, as it goes on, there's a there were some a few people that got arrested for sexual abuse of children, and one of those was uh, Brian Peck. And it was like, this was crazy because this man was around so many children. He was the dialogue coach. He was around so many children. God only knows how many of them, he, who else he might have touched that did not come forward or did not say anything when he was. That was really hard to watch. And then the things that, that he was doing. And then you had the actor Drake Bell from Josh and Drake, who... My little cousin used to love that show. My little nieces and stuff watching that show with them. To see and hear him tell his story and watch his, his father to relive that and mention some of the horrible things that was done to him. And done to him for years and years. And it was pretty much swept under the rug, basically. It's like they, they did charge the guy and arrested the guy, whatever. But then it was boop, back to work. That takes a toll. And then you wonder why some of these actors, these kid stars grew up and they turned to drugs and partying because they didn't get the therapy they need. They didn't have the support that they need. And I just thought it was crazy how there turned out to be three child abusers on these sets of these Nickelodeon shows. Now, that's ridiculous. That is totally, totally ridiculous. Now, they did not, they didn't say that from what I remember, from what I was watching, they did not say, no one accused yet, I haven't seen any, correct me if I'm wrong, 
No one actually said Dan Snyder inappropriately touched anybody, but they did say he did make some of the children feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable, that he made some of them feel uncomfortable, that he just was not, you know, that like he had, and that he was behind all these nasty jokes and foot fetishes and things of that nature. And that is just outrageous. But this show, I'm telling you, this series, it was good, but um, it, it's not easy to watch because it's going to make you mad. It's going to make you mad. Now, that Brian Peck dude, he was arrested in 2003 and charged in 2003. And the case was sealed. So to this day, we did not know. Until this day, they didn't know who the child star was till Drake Bell came forward. So, so sad, so sad to hear what he went through and all the things that he went through and how he just felt trapped and so afraid. And you, that's the story over and over. And there was another young lady with the other guy who got arrested that did these things. He was sending her videos himself naked and ch to children. To ch it was so disgusting to watch. It was so heartbreaking to watch. But, and it was eye-opening like, wow. Why, is he, why are these things happening? Why are y'all allowing these things to happen? But it seemed like once the Me Too movement started, came into play, then people got brave enough to speak up about it and to speak up on it. And they did end up removing Dan Snyder. They didn't prove any sexual abuse from him, but they removed him from Nickelodeon for creating hostile working environments. That it was, you know, the misogynist and the things that he would have. Them. When, why are women massaging you on set? And why, what's with the lewd jokes and the long hours and the not paying people fairly and all those things? That's just terrible. But he says... Dan Snyder says in his defense that he also that there were this was fully vetted by other people. So I'm not to blame for all of this. He said, listen, everybody, there were parents on set. He's denying these things that there were parents on set. There were other people that watched things and these storylines and all things had to be cleared by everyone. So he's like, don't put it. He's trying to say that. No, now that, that we're looking at these things through an adult lens, we're sexualizing it. That's what he's saying. But there was some things like you see Ariana Grande as a young girl laying on the bed and pouring water on her. It does look a little suspect, a lot suspect. It does. It was, it was a lot. It was a lot to see, and it was unfortunate to know him. And my heart goes out to Drake Bell and anybody who has been sexually assaulted and just to know that and how brave of him to come forward and tell his story. I, my, my hat's off to him, salute to him. And I have a feeling because of this documentary, well, we know more and more people are coming, about, coming out, more and more people are speaking up. But I think there's going to be a lot more dirt being uncovered because that was a lot. It was a lot in those four episodes, a lot going on, a lot to watch. And I was pissed off. And then, you know, you hear from these children, well, they're adults now, they do, and they're still traumatized from the things that happened to them in their, in their youth. So that's crazy. Then I saw an interview with um, Keenan from, remember Keenan from um, Keenan and Kel, the actor Keenan, and he says that, you know, he didn't really experience anything, any of this stuff with Dan Snyder, but he hopes that Nickelodeon continues to investigate and that um, they continue to investigate. And, uh, you know, which was nice of him to say that they continue to investigate and just get all of this out because this is terrible. This was terrible what happened. But, yeah, check it out. Tell me your thoughts if you did watch it. I It was it was. Hard to watch. It was really hard to watch. It kind of was pissing me off. I didn't. I didn't like to hear those things that was happening. And then you wonder why a lot of these kid stars turn to drugs and you know all this stuff at an early age. It's because of no one's protecting the children. So they need to have better laws for these child actors. They really do. They need to have better laws laws for these child actors. They do. That's it. So that's it. That's all I had to say. I watched it. I'm waiting for the fifth and final episode. Um, it really was like eye opening for me, devastating. But um, yeah, it's a lot going on. And, you know, my my prayers out to all of those victims. 
And that's that. Thank you for watching. I will see you all in the next.